uh, I realize that America, in America, that we have so much that in my heart I had not totally depended on God. But when I arrived in Chiang Mai, and from the time my feet hit the ground, I knew that every step depended on God. We would not only fall in love and, and ended up taking a team, it was amazing. Our team was probably one of the most interesting teams that uh, I have ever been with. Uh, we were just ordinary people with an extraordinary heart for God. Our team would go and minister. We would teach the Word of God. We would praise the, uh, His name in song. And we would pray. We were a team of prayer warriors. And during this time, from the time that I began to, to understand the call to Asia, there was this precious face that I would see day and night of a little girl. And here in a remote village, in the deepest jungles of Thailand, and a mother comes up to me and she said, I need prayer. And she says this to the translator. And I look at this little mother and I said, well, what is it that you need and, and how can we pray? And she said, it's not for me, it's for my little girl. And she reaches in back and brings this precious little girl, the little girl that I have seen for months. It was God that uh, took us to prisons. It was God that took us to Agape House where there's over 200 children with AIDS. It is God that taught us that these little children live today because they love Jesus. It was God that took us to villages where we saw that they have so little, but in many, many ways. I saw they have so much. How God moved on our hearts to remember and how he spoke to my heart and said, would you give your life for me, Esther? Would you sacrifice for me, Esther? Would you obey me? And I realized that when we flew home the next day, that I would return to Thailand and that I would serve him in any way that he would call me to provide and be a voice for these awesome, beautiful people in faraway Asia. So it's the prisons and it's the refugee camps and when you go to the refugee camps and you see the children, it breaks your heart. Only, the only words I can give you is you have to go and see it for yourself because I cannot give it to you. But these children have lost everything. They've lost their parents. They've lost their homes. And they are ostracized by people all over the world because nobody wants them. They are Christians. And they used to live in Burma, but now they have no place. And Thailand takes them in. But they can go nowhere. And those children have seen such atrocities that it breaks your heart when you see a brother tuck his little brother into bed and pray for him, and they cry at night. Or you see an older sister taking care of all the siblings because now she has become mother. You're never the same when you see things like this, and they're not just written on a piece of paper, but they're written on the very depths of my heart. So I hope and pray that the pictures you've seen today and the words that you've heard today, that it will touch your life and that you will see there's much to do. And I often think that what we spend on Cokes every day or what we spend on a coffee every day, it breaks my heart because I realize that a house for a person to lead a whole village to the Lord only costs around $500. It's a bamboo house, but they're beautiful.
they're beautiful and they're cool and they're uh, ready for us to just be a witness for God in, in those villages. And they're ready for us to share the gospel in those villages. And I pray that your life will be united with ours as we go and serve in Thailand and that we go and obey, above all, the voice of God.